All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, coming at you with a fight announcement. So UFC is looking to book a flyweight bout between Gion Kim and Maria Agapova, set for UFC 277, tentatively set for Madison Square Garden in New York City, New York. This is an interesting bout here. Uh, you know, both ladies uh, really need a win right now. Uh, and you know what I say when you know two fighters really need a win, they tend to bring it and they tend to come to bang. And with these two fighters, they tend to do that anyway. So when you've got two fighters that like to bang anyway, coming in and they both really need a win should actually mean some fireworks. So I'm pretty excited for this one. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats here. Fire Fist, Gion Kim coming in at nine, five, and two. Demon Slayer, Agapova coming in at 10 and three. Now, Gion Kim, out of the two, she definitely needs to win the most. She is on a three fight losing streak right now. Most recently though, her two most recent losses to G, uh, Molly McCann and Priscilla Cachueta were both fight of the night winning bonuses. So she at least had those going for her in, her, in the losses. Um, Maria Agapova, she's rotated losses and wins uh, Lost to Shanna Dobson, and then picked up a win over Sabina Mazo, and then got absolutely dominated by Marina Moroz before getting submitted just under two months ago. Kim is the elder fighter, 32 to 25 for Agapova, so Agapova has youth going for her. Gian Kim is slightly taller than Agapova, 5'7", 170 centimeters to 5'6", 168 centimeters for Agapova, and mentioned this probably every G on Kim video, but she has a generous reach advantage here. 72 inches, 183 centimeters to 68 inches, 173 centimeters. Uh, I don't think any lady is going to have a longer reach than G on Kim. Not, not a flyweight, that's for sure. So those are your stats on this one. You know, as I was saying, both of these ladies really need a win here. And they're both going to have to bring it. Now, Agapova, she's capable of bringing it. But her big problem is that she's, if she, how do I put this? She's either bringing it or she's falling apart. I mean, she basically fights in two modes. It's almost like she's a bipolar fighter in there. She's either ahead or she's far behind. For Kim, she's like a far more, you know, steady fighter. Like she fights basically at the same pace the entire fight, even to her detriment. I mean, she she's not one of those fighters where she's gonna pick it up as the fight goes on, or, oh, last 20 seconds, I need to, of the round, I really need to impress the judges. She just kind of cruises along. Um, which really brings the big question here. The big question here for me is going to be, can Kim do enough to get ahead of Agapova where Agapova will start falling apart or will Agapova basically be able to deal with Kim's pace and get out ahead? That's the big question here. I, I wish I had a better way to word it. Is basically, if Kim can get ahead of Agapova, then Agapova will start falling apart. If she doesn't, then it's going to be Agapova's game. It's just a really, really interesting bout here. I, I don't see this fight going to the ground, in all honesty. I mean, Kim's not really gonna, likely to take it to the ground, and Agapova's willing to go to the ground. But she also likes to stand and trade on her feet. So I think this one is going to end up being a stand-up banger. The big question is, again, though, is going to go back to that mental game for Agapova versus, you know, the steady pace of Kim. I think that's the X factor here in this one. Anyway, those are just some initial thoughts on this bout. Let me know yours in the comments down below. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to WMAC Now. 
the best, most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.